Okay, students, so today we'll be doing uh, May, June 2024, paper 4, uh, variant 3. So let's start it. Question number 1. Name the process used to produce ammonia from nitrogen. So we have to name the processes over here. Okay, so the process which is used to produce ammonia from nitrogen, this is Heber's process. Heber process. Then, the process which produce lead from molten lead bromide. So, when we have molten lead bromide and we want to extract lead from it, then we do it by using electrolysis. Part C, separate an insoluble solid from the mixture of an insoluble solid and a solution. So, if we have a solution mixture containing an, a soluble substance, a soluble solution, plus there, there, there is some insoluble part in it. So, how we can separate the insoluble substance from it? By doing filtration. Produce ethanol from ethene. So the process by which we prepare ethanol by ethene is the catalytic addition of steam. Catalytic addition of steam. This is addition reaction because the water is added to ethene to make ethanol. This is one of the method to prepare ethanol. Next question, which process or name the process used to identify the components of a mixture of soluble colored substances? So if we have soluble, if you have a mixture of colored substances and we want to identify them, then we do it by using the method of chromatography. To separate a mixture of several liquids with different boiling points. Now, if we want to separate the mixture of liquids on the basis of their different boiling points, then we do this by fractional distillation. Determine the volume of an acid required to neutralize a given volume of an alkali. This one is really simple, that if we have an acid and we want to neutralize an acid by using an alkali, so it's simple, it's neutralization reaction. Let's move on. Question number two, complete the table. So we have copper here. And the copper, 29 is its atomic number, atomic number, and 63 is its mass number. Atomic number tells us the number of protons, so the number of protons will be 29. Number of electrons, as it is a neutral atom, so in a neutral atom, the number of protons and electrons are always equal. So, 29 will be electrons. As for the number of neutrons, to find the number of neutrons, we will do the mass number minus atomic number. This will give us the number of neutrons. So the mass number here is 63 and the atomic number is 29. When we minus them, we get the answer 34. <laughs> Now, chlorine 17 and 37, and it's a chloride ion with a negative charge. It means it has one more electron than proton. Minus sign comes when the electron is gained. So, 17 atomic number means its protons will be 17, but electrons will be one more, so 18. Now, for this one, the proton numbers are 30. It means the sum one, there is an element which has the atomic number 30. And the mass number will be proton plus neutron. 
So when we add proton 30 plus 34, it gives us the answer 64. So it means that the mass of this element is 64. Now, as we can see that the number of electrons are 2 less than protons. Protons are 30 and electrons are 28. So they are 2 less. So after losing the electrons, the particle gains positive charge. So here it will be 2 positive. And if we see from the periodic table, then the element with 30 atomic number is zinc. We always ident identify the element by using its atomic number. Because atomic number is the identity of an atom. We identify the element by using its atomic number. Next question. This question is about elements and compounds. Some properties of graphite, oxygen and carbon monoxide are shown in the table. As you can see, the graphite, its melting and boiling points are very high and it's a good conductor. As for the oxygen and carbon monoxide, the melting and boiling points are both in minus, in negative. This makes oxygen and carbon gas at room temperature. When the melting and boiling points both are in negative, it means that the substance is a gas at room temperature. Means its melting and boiling points both are below 25. They both are poor conductors also. The question is, explain why graphite conducts electricity when solid. So why graphite conducts electricity? Electricity is conducted because of two things. The conductance is due to two substances. Either it is because of free moving electrons or free moving ions. Free moving electrons, they, these are the reason for the conductance in metals and graphite. Because in metals and graphite, in their structure, they have free delocalized electrons. And for the free ions, they conduct in the ionic compounds and if the ionic compounds are in the molten form or aqueous form then they have free moving ions and they conduct electricity. So the graphite, why it conducts electricity in the solid form? The reason is because the graphite has mobile delocalized electrons. Because of free moving electrons. Complete the dot and cross diagram of a molecule of oxygen show outer shell electrons only. Now, oxygen has eight atomic number. It means it has eight electrons. Oxygen's electronic configuration will be two comma six. So two electrons in the first shell, six electrons in the second shell. Six electrons in the second shell means oxygen needs two electrons to get completed. And for covalent bonding, we have a rule that the number of electrons they need is equal to the number of electrons they will share. So if an element needs two electrons, so it means it will share also two electrons. Now, as we can see that in the oxygen, there are total six electrons in the outer shell. So out of six electrons, it will share two electrons because it needs two. So it will share also two out of these six. So oxygen number one will share two electrons. So two electrons will be in the middle area, the overlapped area, and rest of the four electrons will be drawn outside. They will create an unshared pair of electrons. So actually there are two unshared electrons on one oxygen atom. As for the other oxygen, same thing, six electrons and out of six electrons it will share two and rest of the four electrons will be drawn outside. 
So this is oxygen molecule with a double bond between the two atoms. Deduce the physical state of carbon monoxide at minus 195 degrees Celsius. Use the data in the table to explain your answer. So, what will be the physical state of carbon monoxide at minus 195? Now, we have to see from the table that where minus 195 comes. Minus 195 is coming between the melting and boiling point. It's coming between minus 199 and minus 191. So, between melting and boiling point, a substance is liquid because it has melted after melting point and below boiling point means before boiling so after melting and before boiling a substance is a liquid so at minus 195 it's a liquid and the reason is because Minus 195 degrees Celsius lies between melting and boiling point. Explain in terms of structure and bonding why graphite has a much higher melting point than carbon monoxide. Graphite is an allotropic form of carbon. It's an allotropic form of carbon and it's a macromolecular structure. It's a giant structure with a strong covalent bond between particles. Giant covalent structure. But Carbon monoxide, it also has a covalent bonding, but it's a simple molecular structure. And as it is a simple molecular structure, it's the, for, the, the force of attraction between its particles is weak. <clears throat> so what will you write? We'll write that the graphite, first we'll write about the structures. We have to mention both about the structure and bonding of both substances to complete the answer. Now, we know that graphite has a giant covalent structure. While carbon monoxide has a simple molecular structure. The force of attraction, force of attraction between graphite particles are strong and between carbon monoxide particles are weak. So, graphite needs much higher energy to overcome the forces. So, that's the complete answer. Next, potassium reacts with chlorine to form potassium chloride. Write a symbol equation for this reaction. Potassium is K and it reacts with chlorine. Chlorine is a halogen which is always diatomic. The halogens exist as diatomic molecules. So K plus Cl2 gives KCl. And when we balance them, 
because of chlorine, we'll write 2 on the product side. And by writing 2 on the product side, the potassium also became 2. So we'll write 2 on the reactant side with potassium. Then there is a question about electrolysis. A dilute aqueous solution of potassium chloride undergoes electrolysis. It's a dilute solution of potassium chloride, KCl. Oxygen is produced at the anode. State what is meant by the term electrolysis. Now, as electrolysis is divided into two parts, electro word comes from electricity and lysis comes from breakdown. Lysis means breakdown. So the complete definition of electrolysis is it's the breakdown of ionic compounds in molten or aqueous form by passing electricity. It's the complete definition. You have to write, it is must to write the breakdown of ionic compounds in molten or aqueous form. Write an ionic half equation for the production of oxygen at the anode. Now, at the anode, as it's a dilute solution, so we know that hydroxide ions will go to the anode. If we see here that from potassium chloride, we have potassium ion and chloride ion. And because of the dilute solution, we have H positive and OH negative. Now, if we see at the anode, it's, it is a positive charge electrode. It's positively charged. So, out of chlorine and hydroxide, which one will discharge at anode? Obviously, it will be hydroxide because it's a dilute solution. So, hydroxide will discharge at anode and form oxygen gas. We'll write the equation. It will be like this. OH negative will make oxygen plus water after losing electrons. This is the equation and when we balance it, it will be 4 OH negative. We'll give oxygen molecule, one oxygen molecule, two water molecules after losing four electrons. So this is the complete equation for the production of oxygen at the anode.